Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Before starting the video, if you have not subscribed our channel till now, then please subscribe it. And if you have not watched the previous video, then watch it. In this video, we will see how many ways to break singleton design pattern. Using serializable interface, used to save object state. Serialize the singleton object in a file using output stream and read the serialized object using input stream and hold in a reference to singleton class which you created. Then print the object or hash code to instances will be available. Using clonable interface, used to create duplicate object. There is a method called clone, override clone and return super dot clone so using that also can new object of singleton class which we created. Using reflection API dash used to examining or modifying the runtime behavior of a class at runtime. There is a method called new instance in reflection API that can call using constructor object and that will return a new object of singleton class which we created. Let's implement. Let's first see how to break singleton using serializable. Create a new package to make it simple package name ends with the scroy. Create a new class to make it simple class name is using serializable. Let's first implement a lazy singleton, as we saw already in last video so same way I'm implementing here also. In lazy singleton, we create an object inside get instance method based on the null condition. See that's it. Let's see how do we create an object of this singleton class. Let's run and see what is the output. As you can see both objects are printing same output. Now let's break singleton concept using serializable interface. As you know to implement serializable need to implement serializable interface. Add serializable interface related changes in a singleton class. It's giving warning so let's add serial version ID also. If you know don't serialization process in Java. So it's like we will write an object in sir file and after that. We can read the same file and cast the object with the same class. Let's see how do we do that. Output stream for write the object and input stream for reading the object. As you can see code looks very simple. Let's run and see two instances are creating or not. The two instances created. How to prevent for serializable interface? Use read resolve method so read resolve is used for replacing the object read from the stream. 
The only use I have ever seen for this is enforcing singletons. When an object is read, replace it with the singleton instance. This ensures that nobody can create another instance by serializing and deserializing the singleton. Here is the syntax. Let's see how to add read resolve in existing code. See that's it. Let's run again and see what is the output. See, after read resolve only one instance is creating. I hope now you won't forget how to prevent singleton when the class is implementing serializable interface. Let's see how to break singleton using clonable interface. Create a new class to make it simple. Class name is using clonable. Let's implement static block singleton, as we saw already in last video so same way I'm implementing here also. That's it. Let's see how do we create an object of singleton to class. Let's run and see what is the output. As you can see both objects are printing same output. Now let's break singleton concept using clonable interface. As you know how to implement clone functionality need to implement clonable interface. Add clonable interface related changes in a singleton class. Need to override clone method inside singleton2 class. As you can see code looks very simple. Let's run and see two instances are creating or not. See two instances created. How to prevent for clonable interface. Instead of return super dot clone, return get instance method which is responsible to create a single object or throw an exception. Here are the solutions. Let's add solution 1. See that's it. Let's run again and see what is the output. See, after the change from super clone to get instance only one instance is creating. Let's add solution 2. See that's it. Let's run again and see what is the output. See this time it's throwing clone not supported exception when we try to clone. As per the requirement, you can choose any one solution. I hope now you won't forget how to prevent singleton when the class is implementing clonable interface. Let's see how to break singleton using reflection. Create a new class to make it simple class name is using reflection. Let's implement build pew singleton, as we saw already in last video so same way I'm implementing here also.
see that's it. Let's see how do we create an object of singleton 3 class. Let's run and see what is the output. As you can see both objects are printing same output. Now let's break singleton concept using reflection API. As you can see code looks very simple, let's run and see two instances are creating or not. See two instances created. How to prevent for reflection API. Throw exception from a private constructor. If the object already exists then immediately come out using system.exit0, then obviously there is no possibility of multiple instances. Here is the syntax. Let's fix using throwing an exception in private constructor. See only allowing to create only one instance, for other it's giving exception. There is one more solution so instead of exception print her message and then come out using system exit. See it's only one instance is creating. I hope now you won't forget how to prevent singleton for reflection. Let's check existing singleton class. Create a new class to make it simple class name is existing singleton. Create the main method. There is a class called runtime and this class is a singleton class. Let's try to create two objects of runtime class. So only one instance is creating, let's break it using reflection. Let's copy same code which we used before. Let's run again and see two instances are allowing to create or not. See two instances are coming. Let's see the implementation of runtime class. It's happening because constructor does not have any code. And to prevent multiple instances, the constructor must have some code. Here is the runtime documentation. Every Java application has a single instance of the class runtime that allows the application to interface with the environment in which the application is running. The current runtime can be obtained from the getRuntime method. I hope you like this video then please subscribe our channel.